thanks so much for taking the time to talk with me about your new film, Leo. Uh, well, the movie's already poised for a pretty massive debut, literally, uh, with, with Leo uh, going to be in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Is it surreal to have your character on such a large stage like that? It's, it's so surreal that when we heard about it, we didn't even, it wasn't even an idea that's something that we were aspiring to. It wasn't even a concept that we thought, oh yeah, well, let's have a balloon in the parade. It just was like, what? A balloon <laughs> in the parade? That's how that's how out there it was for us. That we didn't it wasn't even a consideration. But yeah, it's it's amazing to see that there is a balloon that is our character that we designed and, and that it's up there. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. And we're gonna be holding yeah, Thanksgiving Day, David and I will be part of the balloon handler team. We had to do it, you know. Um, Wait, I think, is that true? It, it's true. <laughs> yep, we're going to be there. So. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> we had Robert Smigel wanted to do it too, but he had family obligations, so he's not going to be able to do that. But um, I just wanted to say that Robert Smigel, the co-director with us, writer, the, the script with Adam and music, he summed it up best when he was like, yeah, a balloon was never on my entertainment bucket list. You know, it's like we all think of awards and this and that and making a feature, but a balloon, no, a Macy's Day balloon, never thought of it. <laughs> so, yeah. And then when they showed it to us, we saw it at the, uh, the arena in Newark, New Jersey, and the people from Macy's were great and they knew what they were doing. They opened this door and they lead us out into this huge arena floor and there's a two and a half, three story tall balloon. It was just like, you know, it was crazy. It was great. That's amazing. Especially, uh, you know, you guys have been in the business for a long time, but this is your directorial feature, uh, or sorry, your directorial debut uh, for a feature film. Uh, and uh, what made, what about Leo made you want to take that leap? Well, we've always wanted to do features and um, having worked in TV for so long, and we had worked with, uh, we worked with Robert Smigel for so long on TV Funhouse on SNL. So we developed the relationship with him over decades and then we got the opportunity to work with Adam on Hotel Transylvania too. And so we developed a relationship with him. And, and, and we all knew that we wanted to do something else together. And uh, the, the, so when Adam and Robert uh, developed this script off of uh, uh, Robert had did the initial draft and then Adam you know, uh, helped punch it up and with jokes and added his twist and stuff. Uh, they knew, we kind of knew that we were in the process. We were talking to them about it. Uh, so it was kind of a no brainer that, yeah, we're going to, this is what we're going to do. And it was really a, an opportunity that we couldn't give up to, to do a feature film. Yeah. And the other great thing is our first feature film and it's Adam Sandler, you know, and I have to say, you hear great things about Adam and <laughs> they're, they're, they're all true. You know, he's just such a supportive and giving collaborator and artist and, the crew, the people at Happy Madison, you know, they made us feel like only you guys can do this film. Like, you got to do this film. And, like, it's, it's been a, an amazing experience. And Netflix animation also. You know, it's like, uh, it, it, it feels like we won the, you know, the, the Super Lotto or something. We're, we're also, we're older 50-plus-something-year-old yeah. guys working in TV animation in New York, which is, like, so out of the business to be able to go to LA and work in Hollywood on a feature is like really, you know, we're, we're 25, 30 year old, 30 overnight, 30 year overnight successes. You know, it's really that, that feeling, which is like, we've done this for so long, but we never would have had the opportunity to direct a feature had circumstances not been what they were working with Robert and Adam. And then COVID, COVID made it much easier too, to be home in New York and work over Zoom. So it was really, uh, it's been an amazing opportunity. I know you have a lot of questions. I just want to add a little side <laughs> note too. Like it's like Good. Adam refers to us as the fellas or the boys. You know, like look at white hair, white beards, right? So when we first met the Netflix executives, we walk in and they see these two guys like in their fifties or so, and it's like I could see the look in their faces. So I, I, to try and diffuse the situation, it was like, listen, my wife says, like, I act like a 12-year-old. So if you take my real age and, like, you know, average them out, it's somewhere in the, like, the late 20s, early 30s, perhaps, you know? So anyways, anything to, you know, to sell us. That's perfect. That's perfect. Well, I, I read a quote from you guys uh, from, from a few weeks ago uh, about how so much of Leo uh, was birthed out of all of you guys, you know, wanting 
wanting a product that, you know, your kids could have watched in, in middle school or so. How did your experience as parents influence Leo? Well, yeah, just having kids, being around kids, experiencing what kids go through and, and feel that that was one of the things. I mean, it was it was Robert Smigel's idea to have the, the lizard and being in the classroom and all that aspect. But we really as parents and as older parents, you know, feeling connected to Leo in a sense that we're, our mortality is is looming in the future. Uh, but just the idea that, you know, we, we wanted to capture what we saw in our own kids, what we saw in our kids' friends, and, 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 and make sure that uh, the way that kids act was natural and using, you know, little quirks that we saw in our own kids or other kids to make sure that's in there too, to make the kids feel relatable and realistic and, and kind of, that was, yeah, very influential. Everything was, everything we did was kind of, we always had our kids in the back of the mind. What would a, what would my kid do? Or what would that other kid do? Or, you know, this looks like a kid that, my, that was in my kid's class, you know, and how did they act, you know, or from our own experiences, kids, you know, how did we feel in a certain situation or act in a certain situation just to kind of keep it all, uh, relatable and grounded in reality. Yeah, um, I have, yeah, <laughs> sums it up. That was really great. So good answer. Perfect. Well, this is obviously such a killer cast. Adam Sandler, Bill Burr, Cecily Strong, so many more. Uh, was there room for, for improv and throwing out alts uh, or, or being in an animation? Is that a little bit more difficult? It's uh, the script by Robert and Adam. It's Robert Smigel and Adam really tight script you know the jokes were in there the dialogue you know it, it was really great and you're right when you get a cast like that some improv but like their reads like you know the, the variations in the reads were just hilarious in and of itself um someone like uh jason alexander had a bunch of improv stuff in there like you know uh during the party scene that you'll see in the film and uh but the cast itself like cecily strong like uh they were talking to a, a, a superstar type actress originally to play the part of the substitute teacher, Ms. Malkin. And Cecily, the Saturday Night Live connection as a favor to Adam and Robert, came in and helped us with the table read. She got the script a few days before, came in and took the script out of her bag. She had notes and notations in it. And the minute we heard her, Mrs. Malkin, it was like, that's it. That's our Mrs. Malkin. She nailed it, you know. Um, and her, she's also an amazing singer, too. Uh, the, uh, the rest of the cast, you know, when you have as long and as uh, history to career as, like, Adam and Robert and Showbiz, you pick up the phone, and the next thing you know, like, um, you know, Rob Schneider's in it, or, you know, Joe Coy, everyone wants to work with Adam. Uh, it, it was just... It was amazing how it all came together. And the kids themselves, like, you know, we wanted to get a cast who sounded naturalistic. We grew up with the Charlie Brown cartoons, for instance, the early ones. And we wanted the kids to sound like real kids. And uh, I think we filled that beautifully, you know, like uh, Adam's kids were the right age at the time. And his daughters have since gone on. Now they have a career, like three years, four years later, they're starring in their own film on Netflix. Robert Smigel's kids came on board just to do... Uh, Scratch Track, which is the initial thing that inspires the animators and the storyboard artists. And their voices, they're so naturalistic and they weren't like, you know, precocious or overextending Broadway baby type things that we ended up using their Scratch Track and like recording them for the film. And the kids we did find who were and are professionals, they got it. Like, tone it down. Like, let's try and just be yourself. Like, you talk to your mom and dad. So it was fantastic, the voice cast. So good. Yeah. Well, it's just about my time. I uh, Before I let you go, you guys have been uh, responsible for so many iconic TV Funhouse sketches. Uh, as somebody who grew up on a steady diet of Veggie VeggieTales, uh, I, I have to ask you about religi uh, religitables. Um did you guys ever hear from the original creators of Veggie Tales? I'm so curious what their response was to that sketch. I don't. I don't think we ever. Maybe. Maybe Robert Smigel did. We did not hear a thing. But yeah, that was that was a fun one. That was a crazy one. We actually it was done in New Zealand. We actually did that twice. Yeah. But that's a whole other story. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, it was done in, it was done in New Zealand, and, and, and I, I feel like the whole thing was kind of centered around the circumcision joke with the potato. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reason to do that, to do that uh, whole cartoon. But yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a fun one. An yeah. interesting side you might appreciate is we did one called Escape from, or Journey to the Disney Vault. And um, we actually heard from a member of the Disney family and they loved it. You know, like there was a little bit of, we were nervous at first, like, you know, this is a shot across, you know, ABC owns uh, Disney and NBC was owned by GE at the time. And it's like two corporations, what, what's gonna happen? They all got it and the, uh, they, you know, loved it. And uh, hearing from someone from the Disney family itself was a, uh, Really cool. And, and we recently That's amazing. we recently met the director of, I don't know if you should say this, director of Wish, Chris Buck, who said to us that everybody at Disney loves that one too. <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be saying it, but that's, yeah, we all love that one. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, Robert and David, thank you so much for your time and, and congrats on Leo. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.